Discord's new UI is universally hated by every single person on the internet. It's the only thing I've seen the internet agree on. In Discord's new UI, you have poor contrast that makes it hard to read or distinguish different parts of the UI. You have server icons which got shrunk to save space. While ironically, things like telling you what your username is in case you forgot got bigger to take up more space. And please, for the love of God, do not get me started on this bar up here. It takes up space and it tells you what server you're in, even though you could just move your eyes ever so slightly to the left and see what server you're in. And I'm only scratching the surface of the problems that people have with this UI, but I do want to say that there is something that Discord is working on to try and make things better. Spoiler alert, I don't think it's going to be good enough, and that's why I'm taking matters into my own hands. From going completely back in time to small little tweaks to make things sublime, you can fix Discord's new UI. But before we get to that, this video is sponsored by War Thunder. War Thunder is a free-to-play military vehicle action game with air, land, and sea combat. It doesn't matter if you're a modern military nerd, or a historical nerd, or someone who failed history like me. There's a good chance your favorite plane, helicopter, boat, or tank is in this game. And you can customize your vehicles however you want. And yes, there's even anime girls. And speaking of being a nerd, this game is peak nerdiness. If you shoot a tank's tracks, it can't move. If you shoot a jet's fuel tank, the jet will catch on fire. And with tanks, your round can ricochet depending on the caliber, target armor thickness, and what angle you shoot at. These guys even source aircraft manuals to change certain vehicle stats in their patch notes. It's that nerdy, and I love it. And with constant game updates, there's always more things being added. Like in War Thunder's Hornet Sting update, you have new vehicles, graphic and audio enhancements, there's thrust vectoring, which allows you to do some epic maneuvers. And there's an overhaul of naval battles with, and I quote, even more dynamic and epic gameplay. So download War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox by using my link in the description. And for new players, or returning players who haven't played for six months or longer, you will receive bonuses of 100,000 Silver Lions, the Eagle of Valor decoration, and more. But what if you aren't at the Gamer Station 9000 that Grandma's Inheritance got for you? Rest in peace, Grandma. Well, download War Thunder Mobile, baby. It's War Thunder but on Android and iOS, link in the description. So thank you War Thunder for sponsoring this video and let's get back to making Discord's UI not garbage. Now here's the thing, if you go on YouTube, there are actually a ton of videos teaching you how to turn off Discord's new UI and go back to the old UI. But there's a big problem with those videos. The way these videos work is that they show you how to get Discord experiments enabled and they tell you to search for the visual refresh experiments. And with this experiment, if you click on not eligible, it will completely revert Discord back back to its beautiful normal self. Kaboom. Everyone is happy. But like I said, there's a big problem. It's the fact that there was a data mine by Discord Previews, link in the description, gotta give credit where credit is due, but they data mined that Discord removed the desktop visual refresh experiment, which means that once Discord puts this patch through, you won't be able to get back to your good old Discord UI. And ironically, this update just happened. If I refresh my Discord, it will update to the newest version, and if I look for visual refresh, it's gone. Discord basically said, even if you know what you're doing, go f yourself. You have to use our new UI now. Now, a question a lot of you might have is why is Discord even doing this? Why are they removing the experiment and why haven't they given us an option just to go back to the classic Discord? Because it's pretty clear people are, are pretty angry. Everywhere you look on the internet, there's people complaining. And the unfortunate thing is that Discord will never have a classical option of the UI. There's a common misconception that people have where Discord's old UI, they could just leave it as it is. The issue is that anytime Discord makes an update, things can break. People are going to complain about about it and ask Discord to fix it, or if Discord adds a new feature, they need to code it for both the UIs. Could Discord maintain both? Yes, they could if they liked us. But business-wise, does it make sense to pay more employees to do the same work on just two different user interfaces? No. It's all about cutting costs and maximizing shareholder value, and that's why we can't have nice things. But with this fix being broken, can I find a way to fix Discord's new UI? And considering there's a lot of time left to this video, yeah. Yeah, I can. All right, so for us to turn Discord's old UI into something like this, or something like this, we need to install something called Vencord. Now, I'll have a link in the description to download Vencord, but just as a, a brief heads up, it is um technically against Discord's terms of service for you to use a client modification. But I swear on my left nut, you will not be banned. Every single video I have uploaded on YouTube has some sort of Vencord client modification on it, and Discord hasn't assassinated me. 
yet. But to get Vencord, it's pretty simple. You click download Vencord, you choose what platform you're on, but we're going to go through Windows because I'm assuming most of you have Windows. If you have Linux or a Mac, you probably can or can't read. But for Windows, click on download Vencord installer.exe, open up that bad boy. All you need to do is click on the version of Discord that you have. If you have stable, PTB, or Canary, if you have no idea what I'm saying, leave it at stable and just click install. Now, if it gives you an error like Discord is open, this is bad. Just click OK and click install again. And at some point, Discord will automatically open up and restart. And what you want to do is you want to go into your user settings, scroll down, and you should see this Vencord section. Congratulations, you followed my horrible instructions. And if you pass that skill check, everything else should be pretty simple. Now, above plugins, you want to click on Vencord, and there's this edit quick CSS section. You want to click on that, and it should open up this window here. This is where we're going to throw in all of the code to customize Discord. It's just how we do things, because it's simple. And I'm stupid. And with that, it's time to go to something that would help my boomer brain. It's a theme called Old Chord by Millbits. Now this will be linked in the description. It's a github.com link. But this is a theme for Discord that brings us back to the old, old UI back from 2020. Now the way to install this is you just scroll down in the GitHub repo. You should see this other section and you want to copy this import URL thing or just click the copy button to the right. But go back to your Discord. Make sure you have your quick CSS window open. If it's not open or you can't find it, just click edit quick CSS again. And what you want to do is just paste in the code. And you should see, like magic, everything changes. It's actually that easy. Now, just like Hannah Montana or Miley Cyrus, I don't remember who sung it, but one of them sang the song, Nobody's Perfect. And like this theme, it's not perfect. There are some issues like unreads, it's just up here for some reason. Also, even if you have a super gaming computer 9000, if you scroll through announcements, you'll notice it doesn't like to scroll. And that's because the super reactions just lag my computer and blow it up. My computer's struggling. It doesn't even know if it's trying to load Discord or run simulation to find a way to make my wiener grow bigger. Now, you can use a plugin to disable super reactions, which does help with performance. Now, for some of you, this might be exactly what you want, and if that's the case, I'm glad I helped you. Bye-bye, see you later. Uh, but for me, I'm not a huge fan of this theme, so if you want to remove themes from Quick CSS, you just delete them. And here's the thing. I'm trying to fix the new UI, not just get rid of it entirely. And to do that, we're going to be looking at the CSS snippets channel in the Vencord Discord server. Now, I'll have the Discord server linked in the description. You need to join the server, and and you also need to make sure that you're logged into Discord on your browser. I'm going to have links in the description to the message that contains the code I'm using for whatever modification that I'm showing you. And if you click on that link in the description and you're not logged into Discord on your browser and you're not in the Vencord server, the links won't work. You can always leave the server after. I'm not your dad. I don't tell you what to do yet. So one of the biggest complaints that I have seen is that the server icons in the new Discord UI are just too small. And to fix that, we are going to be using the revert visual refresh server list code by, I'm going to pronounce every single person's name wrong, by the way, skabow. And I'll have the link to this message in the description. What you want to do is you want to copy this code. You can just select it or you can press the copy button. Thanks Discord for making useful feature. Then what you want to do is you want to go to your normal desktop version of Discord, go to your user settings, scroll down to Vencord, then click edit quick CSS. We always need this quick CSS window. You want to paste in the code and you'll notice instantly that things update and change. And just to show you, I can just flick back and forth. I can delete the code. That's how it looks normally. Paste in the code automatically changes. Ladies and gentlemen, one problem down. And the next one is tackling Mr. Crimson Chin because the next complaint that I saw was, and I quote, they made the voice connected voice chat thing so big it covers up a few servers I'm into. I hate this update so much. In visit secure, I'm going to fix that problem for you by using someone else's code. So I'm not really doing much. But this snippet that we're looking at by Evie is revert user area. Link in the description as always. Now I do actually show you some more advanced versions of this, but I'm going to copy this code for now. Go back to Discord and paste it in. Perfect if you want the normal Discord look, but Quick CSS can do a little bit more fancy things. Taking a look at Obsidian Ninja's don't cover server list with panel code, which again, link in the description. This code when you paste it in just shrinks it to the left so that you can see all your channels. So this would be for people that like the new kind of rounded look of everything, but what if we can go further? And let's take a look at PRTSER or Cardi's code here. Now there's no name for it. I'm just going to call it Cardi's collapsible panel. But unlike anything actually made by Playboy Cardi, this is good when you paste in this code. Now things are a little off center, I will point out. It's the small little menu down here. You can see you're talking, but when you hover over it, it expands open. This is genuinely beautiful. Now the next thing people are complaining about with Discord's new UI is something I could show you a complaint on Reddit about or I can just complain about it myself, you'll notice that in your browser, a good chunk of your screen is taken up by your tabs and your URL bar. And that same space is taken up by this massive hemorrhoid right here, telling you what Discord server you're in. This title bar wastes so much 
fucking space. This feels like going on your grandma's computer and opening up Internet Explorer and having 90% of the page be toolbars. But in this case, it's Discord telling you what server you're in, just in case you couldn't, you know, spend the effort of just seeing it right there. And the person that saved me from my eternal torture is Chloe Cinders, who made the compact hide visual refresh title bar. Link in the description. Now, this one's a little bit intricate because there's multiple different versions of code if you have desktop, if you have browser, or if you just want to hide everything completely. But if you're on desktop, you just need to copy this code. Go back to your Discord. Now, this is very important, but when you paste it in, you will notice that absolutely nothing happens. And that's because anytime you have CSS with at import at the beginning, you need to move it to the very top of the code. So I'm just going to select all this, cut, go to the top, add some space, and paste it in. And once you do that, it's gone. But for you gamers on browser, you want to copy this code here that says everything that does not include window controls. Massive title bar hemorrhoid disappeared. That is the power of Preparation H or Anasol. And that's not even a sponsorship. That's just a good recommendation. <laughs> Why am I telling people on the internet this stuff? <laughs> Contrast sensitivity issues. With Discord's new color scheme, for some reason, it's just harder to read. I, I don't know how to, like, vocalize this, but I do know a fix. So you go to your Discord user settings, you scroll down to Vencord, click on plugins, and you search for client theme. Now you enable this bad boy. If you go to your settings, you'll notice that the theme color is 313338, which is the exact same color as the old Discord theme. It's almost no difference. But one specific number that I found that I like is 292B31. It's not much of a difference, but it makes things just slightly darker, and for some reason my eyes and brain just work better with this. The next minor problem that people have is that Discord decided to change the timestamp when you send a message. If you send a message today, it won't say today at 1149, it'll just say 1149. Why did Discord do this? Let me look into my crystal ball. But thanks to KrekEvyKS1337, they made this detailed timestamp code. And if I go into my general chat and I see people sending messages today, which are just outright incorrect, you'll see it got sent at 3.34 p.m. If I paste in the code today at 3.34 p.m. It's that simple. But since we're talking about CSS, I want to show you more of the interesting stuff, a little bit of a bonus. Like for example, this code here by pointy is work in progress CSS to hide nameplates. Now I'm going to focus your attention to Austin's nameplate here. This dude spent money on Discord. Well, if I paste in the code, not anymore. And it just gets even better folks. Because this CSS snippet by Lusafi or Lulu is called activity status. And it does exactly what you think, baby. If you go into a Discord server that has no idea how to turn off activity status, oh wait, it's Discord's official server. That's rough. But when you paste in this code, it's gone for good. And it just keeps getting better, folks. Because this code by the better alt F4. This one, I don't know how I found, but thank goodness I did. But it disables these quick reacts up here. You see these annoying emojis that always pop up when you hover over a message? They can actually block what you're trying to read. It happens like five times in my videos and I lose my mind every time. Well, you can copy this code, go into your quick CSS, paste that bad boy in, and just like that, when you hover over a message, it's gone. So at the end of all that code, this is how your Discord should look. Everything is almost perfect in my eyes. And the final piece of the puzzle can actually be solved by Discord. So Discord is releasing an experiment called Desktop Refresh Fast Follows. But the point of this experiment is Discord trying to fix their new UI based on people's complaints. I know Discord is actually listening to us, but don't, don't get too excited, it's underwhelming. But if I open up the experiment, we have three different treatments. We have larger guild icons, we have darker guildless backgrounds, and we have both of them combined. But if I click on larger guild icons and I go back to Discord, you will notice that the icons are slightly bigger, maybe? I don't know. I'm going to show you a side-by-side -side because my skibbity toilet, chicken jockey, I am Steve Minecraft movie brain cannot memorize how Discord looks after 30 seconds. But it should be clear by the side-by-side, -side, there is some difference. The second, and in my opinion, the more interesting part of this experiment is the darker guildless background because if we go to Discord's current UI, if we look at the server list and we look at the channel list, they both have the same background color. And if we look at the chat and we look at the member list, they both have the same background color. And with Discord's new UI, you might've noticed that it's hard to like tell things apart. I went on vacation for a week, I was touching grass. And when I came back home and I opened up Discord, I genuinely felt lost. And this is the dude that is on Discord almost every single day because it's part of my YouTube job. And I think what this experiment is trying to do is that when you enable the dark guild list back, 
background, the server list has a different background color than the channel list. And I think just this small change makes it easier for your brain to like figure out the sections of Discord. Because if you look at the old version of Discord, it's very clear. Your server list has a different background color than your channel list. Your channel list has a different background color than your chat. And then your chat has a different background color than your member list. Everything's very distinctly laid out. But Discord's like 50% of the way there because now it's easy to tell your server list from your channel list. All Discord has to do is just make the member list a little bit darker, make this bar up here a little bit darker as well, or a different color, just so it's easy for your brain to distinguish between the separate sections of Discord. And kaboom, it's basically like the old UI and my brain functions properly and I don't feel lost. And with that, folks, I think I've been hit by a brain disease because I don't want to sit on the computer all day and never go outside. The vacation ruins me, boys. I am no longer a Discord degenerate. Anyways, bye-bye. I love you. Mwah.